So you filled out a form and now you're getting this video on the dispatching course. What is it? All the questions and answers will be answered here, I promise. So till date, I have had six one hour sessions with about 150 people that inquired about the dispatch course. Now I recorded everything just to make it so much easier for you guys out there. Now I promise you, whatever you're thinking and whatever questions you have, these 150 people have already asked it. So you'll get the information in this video. So questions on pricing, questions on duration, overview, course overview, all that is going to be answered in this video. So enjoy it. Realistic expectations would be for those of you that are owner operators and are thinking that, you know, we're going to finish this course, we're going to complete this course. And then, you know, miraculously overnight, you're going to know how to open up your small fleet and how to dispatch yourselves. Anybody that's promising you that after a dispatch course that you would be able to do that without further guidance. Okay. That's not setting realistic expectations for you. The course is broken down into 10 modules and the modules are as follows so the first one is introduction to the trucking industry basically giving you guys an overview so a lot of you owner operators or truck drivers for you guys this this module might not be interesting but again the, the course is built for everybody uh, regulations and authorities in the US so that's module number two the third one would be the role of a dispatcher from start to finish the entire role of a dispatcher the fourth module will be all about technology the technology that we use the technology that's recommended uh, whether it's e-logs whether it's different technologies that we use to run our trucking company. We're going to give you an overview about all the technology that we use. And then you yourself can pick and choose whichever ones you would like to go with. Or if you have experience working with other technology, then obviously you would feel more comfortable going with them. The fifth module is about the truckload and less than truckloads. Uh, so the difference between the two. Number six would be hours of service and route planning for optimization. Number seventh module would be documentations in order to book and move ships. So I think that this is the core is going to focus a lot on seven, eight, nine, and 10. So number seven would be the documentations in order to move shipments. Number eight, there's going to be a lot riding on cost per mile and how to calculate cost per mile. So this way you would know that, you know, if you're booking a load or a lot of the skits that I do, you know, when you are booking at $1.20 at $1.30, you're actually running at a loss. And when you're booking at $1.80, 90 or $2 a mile, you're actually a little bit more, you're, you're profitable. So we're going to learn in detail on how to count the cost per mile of our fleet or your fleet or your small, you know, if you want to have one truck and then we're going to do a number nine, the ninth module is more about booking loads and a lot of the skits that I do actually in reality where we're going to be calling together when we're going to be actually calling each other and we're going to do mock phone calls of, you know, broker versus carrier, right? So we in this scenario are the carrier or the dispatcher and we're calling brokers and we're going to be calling brokers on their load. So actually live demonstrations on full calling and booking loads. And then number 10, the last module would be customer service and tracking. So the ability to, after you book a load, to give the proper customer service of what these brokers are requesting and what they want out there. So that's really um, the entire course in a nutshell. These 10 modules are going to consist of about plus minus. It's going to be an hour per module, and this is going to be a 10 hour course. Okay. Now during this course, if you are going to, there, there's always questions and answers towards the end. And that's why I say that it's approximately an hour long. I mean, I'm sure there's going to be, you know, on uh, cost of running a truck is going to be probably a lot longer than a one hour module or how to book a load is going to be a lot longer than a one hour module but the rest of them are going to be uh, we're pacing them at one hour modules and a 10 hour course the price for the dispatch course is going to be $495 US. That's going to be the price of the dispatch course. And then once you are done with the dispatch course, obviously, you know, you can, you can ask for guidance or, you know, if you need me or any one of the instructors to guide you or continue guiding you in what you want to achieve, then we're here for you for a duration of the next 30 days after you finish that dispatch course. Does anybody have any questions on the course? Does anybody have any questions on how we're going to do it hey uh question on the course so i know that you said it's about 10 modules uh could be either five to five hours per day whatever is that 
going to be like classroom time, one-on-one type of thing, or is it going to be like study at your own pace and then you come back? And no, so I'll tell you. So the first course will most likely be, uh, we're almost 99% sure it's going to be a Teams meeting just like this, where there's going to be the presenter and they're going to be going through slides, through PDFs. Most of the people that we've talked to have or completed the form, one of the one of the lines on the form is when do you want to take the course, full-time, part-time, or, or weekends? The majority, I would say probably 40% of the forms were full-time and then followed by 30, yeah, 30 and 30 between evenings part-time and followed by weekends part-time. So I think that the way that we're going, because for, for us presenters also, we work nine to five, so, and it's going to be a few people. So for example, the there's going to be a couple of modules taught more on the business side of it. There's going to be a few modules taught by me. There's going to be one or two modules taught by safety and compliance. So it's different people that I've taken within our company that specialize in different modules and the questions that would gear, be geared towards them, I think they'll be able to answer it properly, the questions that you guys have. Let's go with another question. Alex K, go ahead. Hey, uh, just a quick question. Can we talk, can you just say a couple words about the salaries of a dispatcher? Somebody who does dispatching for a living in the U.S. while living in the U.S. Yeah. And the reason why I ask is because I see more and more often that companies turn to overseas dispatchers. Some companies in uh, Eastern Europe, India, somewhere over there, yeah. because they're cheaper. Like my company is paying only 2% for the whole crew of dispatchers and there's like 20 people there. So my question is how much realistically are we able to make if we turn this into a profession? Got it. So if you are planning on turning this into a profession after the course does not mean that, you know, you're going to have it on your resume and somebody's going to jump all over you. And if anybody's telling you that after a dispatch course, you're ready to become a dispatcher, you're not going to be ready to become a dispatcher. You're going to get an overview. You're going to understand how things are run, but you're still going to need that company to take you by the hand and to train you on their softwares, to train you on how they do things, right? I know how we do things over here. I know how uh, it works in the U.S. US, but every company is geared you know differently and we use different softwares that somebody else might use right now an average salary in the US is approximately depending how good you are I mean it starts off probably at around 40 45 thousand dollars and for a senior dispatcher it's anywhere between 120 140 thousand dollars now obviously that's with experience and with you know years under your belt in regards to the second question of yours about, you know, hiring third parties and outsourcing, yes, a lot of companies are outsourcing stuff to, um, like you said, different parts all over the world in order to save on costs. I do see that happening. A lot of companies in the US, especially in Illinois, like 100% in Illinois, it is extremely common that they hire, you know, that they outsource it to other countries that are a lot cheaper. Do they get 100%? Are they going to know the same as, for example, Eric does or as Alex does, who is an owner operator in the US? Absolutely not. It's completely different and you will not get that same level of service when you're talking about a dispatcher here in North America versus a dispatcher that's there. Uh, hopefully, Alex, did that answer both of your questions? Uh, yeah, kind of good. Thank you. Good afternoon. I have been working as a dispatcher for a few months and of course, I'm still new. I want to know if the course will include analyzing the market as I want to learn how to plan my better route. Yes. Yeah, so one of the modules that I will be teaching is the cost of running a truck and how to book loads. And in that, there are sub chapters and ha uh, a lot of it has to do with analyzing the market on the DAT, analyzing the market, the outbound loads, the inbound loads, profitable lanes, not so profitable lanes. That would definitely be a part of the course. Khalil, go ahead. Yeah, I understand. Um, throughout this course, will we learn how to book all types of loads, like as max, things of that the course is going to cover the generic most popular ones, which is booking dry van loads, it's booking flatbed loads, and booking reefer loads, temperature controlled. I believe there is a small piece that goes into the hazmat. I know we ourselves are a hazmat carrier, but I don't think it's going to dive deep into hazmat at all. It might give you just a little brief overview, but it's not going to dive deep into it. All right, boss, thank you. Not a problem. Uh, how much does the course cost? The course costs $495. How long is the course? The course is 10 modules 
and each module is approximately one hour. It might be a little bit longer depending on the questions that people have per module. Uh, Elaine? Yes, sir. Thank again one more time for giving me a chance to uh, ask a question or to speak. Uh, I just wanted to ask a quick question. At the end of the call, are we going to get some, uh, like, a, like a diploma or any sort of a certificate that testified that at least we have even the basic training? Yes. We never know. I mean, trucking can turn around and not be what and I may want to apply maybe at ET to be a dispatcher of course knowing that they're going to train me to their system or to their way of using the technology and so on yes Yes, you will have you will have a certificate saying that you completed the dispatch course. I truly believe that, you know, in your case and any one of these owner operator cases where you want to open up your own authorities and start dispatching yourselves, this is a perfect course for you. And also getting the overview of the of the industry. So it's more geared towards opening up your small fleet. It's more geared towards if you want to dispatch somebody, you can dispatch somebody, you'll be able to. But in your particular situation this is a course perfectly designed for company drivers that are thinking of becoming owner operators and they want to dispatch themselves with their own MC okay, okay so I heard it. can an American based dispatcher work in a Canadian dispatch force yes I don't see any problem with an American working in a dispatch in a Canadian we have you know Americans working for our company uh, we also have people working in in other countries for our company here at ET transport Muk Mukteba <laughs> question is like i'm gonna invest myself or to make myself dispatcher yes but the truck driver or i'm not an owner operator so i know basically the same thing say uh, with the dispatcher from the other countries you know like, correct because i'm not the, in the industry and my price is gonna be higher for the trucking companies and the drivers so why they should choose me i'm trying to understand this point like in my situation. Yeah, so, so I'll tell you why they would choose you. I, for example, wouldn't feel comfortable to work with somebody who's not in North America, in, in the US. And especially as an American, for example, I wouldn't feel comfortable ha getting dispatched by a company in God knows where. So I would prefer, I myself, and I think most of the owner operators here would probably be in the same boat that I, I wouldn't want to let go of somebody who's dispatching me. I would want somebody locally within the US. I wouldn't want somebody from a different country to tell you the truth. That's why, that's why they would be, I mean, that's why they would probably pay a little bit more for that kind of service. I know I would pay more for that kind of service. Okay. Thank you so much. No problem. Uh, Elizabeth, the next question, will the course include running from the US into Canada as far as what all is needed? Okay. Uh, the course will have the cross-border stuff to it. So yes, you're gonna learn how to book how to book inbound shipments from Canada. Yes, you will know how to book outbound shipments from Canada into the US and US into Canada. The course is not just about Canadian loads. The course is not just about Canadian businesses. It's mostly geared for Americans, and then we will add to it the Canadian portion of it. Any other questions? Hey, um, so. Just out of curiosity, I, mean, I, might, I might be jumping on, on this a little bit. Um, so I guess when we go through the course and get through it, complete it, and is there something like a state licensing test or something like that you have to do in order to be a uh, dispatcher? No. No, there isn't. You would probably you would uh, you would get a certificate of completion from us. I would probably you know spend 15, 20 minutes on uh, resumes and how you can find yourself a job as a dispatcher. Maybe I'll do a section on how much money you can make as a dispatcher or you know potential potential earnings as a dispatcher. And this is before you would go and open up. I think you you'd mentioned that you pref you you want to open up your own trucking company, right? But there's just a lot of stuff that you might need to know behind the scenes before you open up a trucking company. Okay. My first question is, um, so what day do you have for this classes to start because you are really interested in to start these classes? It's probably going to be something that's a Monday to Friday and it's going to be two hours per day. There has been recommendations to do it over three days, three hours, three hours, and three hours over three days, with one of the days being four hours. So we're not, we're not, we're not there yet. Most of the forms that came in are, I would say probably 70% of the forms are more, people want to take it between nine to five on Monday to Friday. And then you have the other, um, I would say probably about 15 or 20% that want to do it in the evening 
evenings and then you have the other 15% that want to do it on the weekends. So we've decided to go with the majority and it's probably going to be Monday to Friday. Our first course would be a Monday to Friday and then it would probably be two hours each day or three days, Monday to Friday and then three hours each day. Okay, perfect. I'm sure your class is going to grow a lot. So if you don't, if this class gets full, do you have anything coming out for like October and November or that will be just the only one? No, so there's going to be one and then it's going to be followed by, um, you know, a series of more. So most likely it's going to be one course ev every month. And then we would, if, it, if it, there's really a need for it, and I see that there's a huge need for it, that it might grow into twice per month and then a maximum, of, a maximum of 15 people. Perfect. So if we need to reach you, we just send you an email. Correct. Yeah, I will be setting. Uh, I will be sending updates on the on the courses on when to take Perfect. it. Like, okay. Second question. Go ahead. Now I understand. Now you are already in the states, so you're in Georgia now. So we need to now get you along because now you got trucks here. So I wish you the best. I want you to get more trucks here. Thank you. So all of you that are over here, make sure you get in touch with him because now he got trucks here. <laughs> Thank you for being here, and I totally appreciate helping us out. Awesome. Thank you so much for the kind words. I appreciate it. Saheed, did you have any questions? I saw you turn on your camera. <laughs> no, actually, uh, I am. Uh, I just want to give you my background. So we are a trucking company back home in Pakistan, right? I live in California, and I, I go back and forth. I used to work for a consulting firm here in the USA. But we have a trucking company back home uh, in Pakistan, which is like 50 years old, you know. We have a big fleet, we are a fleet owner. Yeah. And we work with the multinational companies in Pakistan. So I, we wanted to get into the business here, right? And that's why I want to learn some more about the transportation company and how those uh, companies works in uh, USA or in Canada. How can we provide them the services as a as a truck owner, fleet owner, or as a dispatcher. So I'm very new to this. I, I never, I lived in California since 96, but I've never uh, had any like interest or anything to look into the trucking companies or transportation side of it uh, in USA. Mm -hmm. So I, I did some research, I, I see some things and I don't understand, I'm still very new. I still don't understand how the companies What's the difference between the companies, the dispatchers, and the trucking company? You know, the companies who need the loads, and then there's a dispatcher in the middle, and then there's a trucking company. So I need to understand that structure, how this works, right? Yep. Like, let's say, for example, a company like, um, for example, we work for Unilever in Pakistan, we work for Shell Lubricants in Pakistan. So there's a company who does the RFQs to hire the truck trucks, right? And it's a long-term contract. It's like five-year contract. They, 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 they engage us for five years. We give them the grades and they engage us for different lanes, right? And we are fixed to that. How does that uh, trucking works in America? Are there different, uh, probably there are different, um, what do you want to call, uh, different modes of yep. providing the different kind of trucks, yep. different so kinds of... So there, there, there's a short way to answer your question and then there's a very long way to answer your question, just like the question was. Um, the course will give you an overall understanding about logistics within the U.S. Uh, now, mind you, California is by far, by far the hardest state to work out of when it comes to a trucking company. They have their own rules, their own uh, regulations, which is much more stringent than any other state uh, in the U.S. Um, the all of your questions will be answered within every single one of these modules and it will it will it will make you understand uh, logistics and trucking in the US okay, okay. that's the, sh the short answer okay, I okay. Yeah, it's kind of like very you know basic and broad question I had yeah. so I'm just trying to understand um, no problem um, who have we not heard from Trent so let me pass you some. Um, I have experience. I've been driving since '96. I've been on own operator several times, but um, I, I, I was planning to get some trucks and dispatch them myself. Yep. But what I want to ask you was, was your Atlanta terminal or your terminal in Georgia? 
would you take me on as an intern? Unfortunately, we don't do any of the dispatching in Atlanta. Our head office is in Concord, Ontario in Canada, and this is where our dispatching is happening right now. As the fleet grows in Atlanta, so right now we have four power units. By the end of this year, we're probably gonna have about eight to 10, and then we're looking for Q, end of Q1 of next year to have about uh, 12 to 15 power units. The need might arise to do uh, a dispatch in the US. For now, with just having the four four power units, we do not have that need. We don't recruit dispatchers or we, I, unfortunately, I can't have anybody shadow, but the, it's not the first time that I've had that request. So I am trying to think of other alternatives, aside from the skits that okay. I do, how to book loads. Okay. Uh, that's pretty much it. <laughs> awesome. Elizabeth, you still have your hand up. Khalil, you still have your hand up. Does that mean you have further questions or you just forgot to turn it off? No. Nah, I got one more question. I wanted to know, uh, what is the starting rate uh, for a dispatcher? Like, how do you calculate you know, your money as a dispatcher? You know, dictate that. So the calculating of the rates, is it depends on the kind of job that you land. Are you getting a job that is paid by commission? So for example, 2% of everything that you book, 1% of everything that you book, 3% of everything that you book, or are you going in to work at a company and they're training you on how to book loads further and you're getting a salary? So those are the two things. For me, honestly, I personally think that if you, if you are doing it for the career wise, I think it's more beneficial to get yourself a job working as a dispatcher, do that for a year, or two and then you will understand a whole lot more when you're actually doing it than versus just finishing a course and trying to dispatch drivers i think that that's what i would do uh honey asked the question do you have do you have to have a trucking company to start dispatching uh no you don't have to have a trucking company um there are lots of dispatching services out there uh, there's a lot of third-party dispatching that they would be able to hire you in order to dispatch trucks or third-party trucks. Um, I'm completely new at this field, so I don't know if I need to have a truck or trucking company to be part of dispatching. No, you do not. Um, any freight forwarder, any broker, any uh, logistics company um, would be more interested in you if you had have a course or a basic knowledge and understanding versus somebody who does not have the course or basic knowledge and understanding. And this is what this course is going to give you. It's more of the basic knowledge and understanding of our industry. It's about these 10 modules. Um, you will learn how to, you know, off the load boards. Um, you're gonna learn how to book loads off these load boards. You're gonna know how to negotiate. A lot of it, I mean, you've seen me do it on the TikToks, it's no different. It's just you'll understand a little bit more of the background and a little bit more in detail of how, how I do it. Where they think it's going to land, but nobody knows for sure. Uh, Thank you very much. No problem. Eric Davis. How you doing, RG? I have a quick question. I own, I own a truck and I own two drive for trailers. I purchased two trailers last year. So I got my equipment set to the side. I'm trying to get my own authority. And um, I know a lot of people got their own authority. And I know the first in the beginning got your own authority. A lot of broken, uh, I mean, excuse me, a lot of stuff is what messes with you. You know, you TQLs, you know, you got to take and things like that. So when it comes down to dispatching, the, I guess the first 90 days of uh, brokers who actually work with you over the course of a year, we got more season and you, a lot of more brokers will work with you. But I know sometimes it's kind of um, challenging only working with a very small hand of brokers like the TQL. That's probably the positive main one everybody to mess with because you're so fresh in the game and you have to be seasoned. And I've been trucking over nine years now, so I know the industry pretty well. I'm just waiting for the right time to actually jump out there and um, start my own authority and dispatch myself until I grow. Yeah. So to answer your question, yeah, that's probably one of the the most difficult things that we had as a carrier in Atlanta was the uh, getting our first loads because like you said, nobody wants to work with you as a new carrier. And the ones that will work with you, they're just trying to rob you. Like, you know, if the rates are $1.50, they'll, they'll pay you $1.25 a mile. So it's, very, um, it's a very, very hard situation to be in. How do you work around it? I don't know how to make your MC, you know, how to get to that that three months or four months where people will start working with you. But it was definitely a challenge that we had ourselves also. Any other questions, Jamil? 
Yeah, yes, uh, Aaron. So I have a question. I'm still like I'm still like a little confused about uh, how it works. So in your videos, you was uh, like negotiating with negotiating with the customer uh, to take a loan, let's say from Atlanta to Michigan at trade 1.8, let's say. So uh, in this case, what you will do? You will sell you will sell this loan to another or uh, you will sell it to another carrier for at lowest rate, and you take the difference profit. No, no. So that, that that I guess that that the dispatch course will explain a lot to you. So what do you do? Th that's for our own asset-based trucks. Okay. So those are for. I am actually finding loads for our trucks. So if you are, yeah. It's, in, in, in case like in case I don't have truck, can I can I like take the take the business from the customer at a rate and sell it to another carrier at uh, a different rate and take the profit? As, as long as it's the manufacturing plan. So if you get the work directly from the shipper, then you can yeah. broker out their freight. But if you take it from another broker and try to sell it, then it's considered double brokering and that's illegal. Oh. That, that you're not allowed to do. Okay. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Um, I'm going to ask somebody from the ones that have their cameras off. Michael? Yes, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. And uh, I really appreciate your contribution towards the uh, trucking industry. My question is, uh, I really wanted to get into the industry from a long time. And a friend of mine, he just suggested me to join Dispatch. Is Dispatch a good start? So Dispatch, I think most of my consultations, when people pay me, you know, Hi Ronan, I wanna you know I wanna open up my own trucking company. Most of those consultations end with your first step should be doing a dispatch course. Okay, and it was well before I ever developed a dispatch course. I guide people to take a dispatch course because it will open your eyes on if it's something that you want to do, you don't want to do. You know, if you're jumping into this industry, you're investing a lot of money, whether it's a truck, whether it's a trailer, you know, the systems that we use, the, you know, the investment that you need to put into it, it's a lot of money, right? So the first thing you want to do is take a dispatch course to see, you know, is this something that's interesting? Is this something that's profitable? You're going to start, you know, after we do our cost analysis of running a truck you can start running scenarios of if you have one truck if you have two trucks if you have three trucks you know what kind of profit margins would you make is it even worth it i mean some people might say listen if i'm making three thousand dollars a truck for all this headache times three trucks nine thousand dollars what do i need this problems for i don't need this headache and then from the dispatch course you will know all this and then you can say you know what this is for me or you know what this is not for me for those of you driving trucks already and for those of you owner operators you're going to quickly calculate how much money they make off of you right and you're gonna know oh my god my company makes x amount of dollars off of me now i could dispatch myself and i can you know recover that money and make it for myself right so with every uh, we're all in different scenarios or in different situations but i truly believe that the dispatch course is where you need to start whether it's our dispatch course or anyone else's dispatch course again that's probably where you would need to start Thank you very much, sir. Uh, is there anybody else that has a question that that would want to ask? Uh, Bulget, do you have any questions? Uh, hi, uh, I have a question uh, for somebody else. Is it necessary to have a CDL to start your own fleet? To get a truck from dealership one do you need CDL or you can just, anybody can get it? No, you do not need a CDL. I myself, if I'm a perfect example of it, I don't have a CDL. And I started when I was 21, 22. And I bought my first few trucks without having a CDL. So you don't need it. Okay, thank you. Uh, Isam? Uh, yes, sir. I was just wondering, is it, is it possible for me, since I'm still driving, to, to do like a part-time, like uh, my 10-hour break or 24-hour break, to try to dispatch uh, some... So, uh, is it possible to dispatch drivers part time? As much as I would love for you to take my course, no, it's not. Realistically, realistically, it's something that you should probably dedicate more full time or look to dispatch yourself first before you dispatch other people. Gotcha. All right, man. Thank you. No problem. All right, so guys, follow-up questions that I'm getting is if I am doing the training course myself. So I'm actually getting the best of the best people in my office to train the relevant modules to them. So I have one trainer that's actually a trainer that will be doing most of the modules. We have safety and compliance doing two modules and I will be teaching three modules out of the 10. So guys, we are starting in November, first week of November. Please look out for your emails and I will be in touch with you guys.